I want to do one more example this week. And we've been talking about APIs. We've been talking about front end libraries and different module systems and ways of putting these things together. And I thought it might be interesting to write a small web app where we have a piece of uh, JavaScript that we write as a module. So I'll use the module I've been working on so far. And then I want to use that same code in the browser and in Node. And I want to write in one project, I want to write an API and a web server, like a static um, bundled web app that uh, I can use in the browser. So I thought I would just show you like using require and import and all of these different things together as an example to do it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little web app here using Bootstrap and jQuery and all these other things we're talking about where I can drag and drop a file into the browser. It'll upload it to my web server. The web server will calculate statistics for all of the lines, like count everything in there, send that data back to the browser, and then the browser will display all of that data. So, all right, let me, let me dive in with you and show you uh, what we have here. So I've got the first thing that I have, the layout of my project, I'll just go through. So essentially I have uh, in my package.json, I've defined a whole bunch of different dependencies that I'm going to use. So some of these we've seen before, I'm going to use express and I'm going to use cores. Uh, and then I'm going to add things like jQuery and bootstrap and so on as dependencies in my project. So I've NPM installed these already. Now you'll notice that some of these I have listed in dev dependencies and some of them I have in dependencies. Actually, some of these are wrong. Let me move them around. So for example, these two should be, um, yeah, that's better. So if I alphabetize this, like that. Yeah. Okay. So for dev dependencies, actually I've made a mistake. I've got a bunch of these in the wrong spot. Uh, my dev dependencies are the things that I need in order to do development on my project. I don't necessarily need them to run my code, but they're the things that I need when I'm doing development. And my dependencies are all of the things that I need when I'm uh, actually going to like ship this thing to production or I'm going to work with it. So some of these things are just tools that I'm going to be using on the dev side. And I'm going to talk about all of these things and explain what's going on here. So I've got my package.json. I've already installed all my modules. And then I, I want to take you through the, the layout of my code. So essentially what I have here is I have a series of directories. So at the top level of my project, I have a .vs code directory and inside is a file called settings.json. So if you followed my advice, you've already installed a bunch of extensions. And one of the extensions that I recommended that you install is the Prettier extension. So the Prettier extension, this ESBNP Prettier extension is gonna do automatic uh, formatting for me if I turn it on. So if I tell it to automatically format my code when I save it. So that's what I'm doing over here in settings.json. I have a JSON file that defines a number of settings for this project. And here you can see it's going to automatically format every time that I save a file and it's going to use the formatter prettier VS code. So it's going to use that extension. So I would suggest that when you set this up, that you don't set up automatic formatting with prettier on every in your editor for every project, because you're going to work on some projects where people won't want that. Like if you get hired at a co-op position and they don't use Prettier, you don't want your editor to automatically be, you know, formatting things in a way they don't want. But if you're working on a specific project that allows it, you can go in and you can write your own settings and you can put any settings you want for the editor in here inside of this settings.json file. So I'm going to do that so that my code will be nice and neat as I'm working. Okay, then I have three other folders that I want to talk about. I have an API folder, an app folder, and a shared folder. So inside shared, I have this character count module that we've been working on. And just to remind you what it does, it allows us to pass in a string of text, split it into a series of lines, 
and then use that to calculate all of the, the non-white space characters in the line. So how many characters are there in the line? And then return an object back again. And I'm using what we, what we referred to before as a common JS style module. So this is what Node expects. Module.exports.characterCount equals character count. So I have this module and my goal is to use this module both in Node and in the browser to show you using it both ways. So that's what's in shared. Now inside API, I have a single file index.js. And what I want to do here is I want to write a little uh, web API, JSON web API. So let's do that quickly. So I'm going to pull in express and a few other things. So I'm going to use the body parser. Um, and I want to be able to do this across origins. So I'm going to pull in cores for middleware. And um, you can see here, for example, that I, I did double quotes above and single quotes here. And because I'm using Prettier, when I save, you'll see that it automatically normalizes everything for me. So this is another nice thing about having Prettier. Or if I forget to put a semicolon, uh, it'll automatically stick that semicolon in for me. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in my character count function and it lives one level up inside shared and there it is, uh, character count. And you're gonna notice that for the most part, I'm not gonna put .js when I do this, I'm gonna leave it off. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is sometimes I'm going to want to pull in a folder.index.js. So if you have a module that is named like this, like character count slash index.js, you can just leave off the index.js. It'll automatically pull that in. The other reason is later on in the course, when we start working with TypeScript, you're going to have both TS files and JS files. And if you just leave the extension off, then the right thing will happen. It'll automatically look for a file called uh, .js. Okay, I've pulled in character count. Okay, so let's set up our app. So I'm gonna create an app by calling the express function. And I'm gonna set up my uh, middleware. So I'll use cores. And I'm also, in this example, I'm gonna wanna be able to drag and drop files here and then post those files to the server. So I need to be able to receive large blocks of text in the body of uh, my requests. So I'm gonna set up my body parser to allow that. So I'll say app.use, I'm gonna set up body parser, and I'm gonna say that I want it to allow text, and I'll put a limit on it of let's say five megabytes. So anything five megabytes or less is fine and it can be sent to me. Okay, so let's write a route for post. And I'm gonna do slash API slash character count. And let's receive in the, um, well, let's do the following. Let's say, um, Let's pull the body off of the request. Or another way you'll see people do this is they'll, they'll say, uh, they'll do that. So we'll get the body and then let's pass the body to our character count function. And so we will say uh, character count body. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to return this back to the caller on the response. So I'm gonna send it back as JSON and I'll just pass back this like so. And really, I don't need to do any of this. I could just say rec.body here and get rid of this and pull this back up like so. Okay, so all I have left, I guess, is just to start this. So let's define a port, which is gonna be whatever is on the um, environment, or let's use 8080 as uh, the default port. 
and we'll say app.listen on that port. And we'll say console.log listening on whatever port has been configured, like so. Okay, so save that. So at this point, I should be able to run that. I should be able to say node API index.js, and it starts up my server. That looks good. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, because I wanna be able to write and make changes to my server, I'm gonna use something called Nodemon. And if you've never used Nodemon before, what it lets you do is instead of, instead of calling your server with Node, you call it with Nodemon. And, and what it'll do is it will watch for you to make changes to the code. And if you update the code, it'll automatically restart your server. So in my package.json file, you'll see that I have Nodemon installed as a dev dependency. And I've written a few scripts here. So I have a script called API, and what it does is it runs my Node API. So if I say npm run API, it'll start up my, start up my server like that. But if I say npm run API colon dev, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start up Nodemon and it's gonna start up the uh, API folder. So API slash uh, index.js. So when I do this, it starts up my server, but it also prints out this extra information here. And you'll notice if I go in here and I make a change, like if I put a new line in and I save this, you'll see that it automatically has restarted my server for me. So this is nice when you're working on an API server and you wanna have the server reload automatically whenever you make changes. I have a couple of other things in here that I'll just call out. When you're doing uh, Nodemon, you can configure Nodemon. There's a whole bunch of configuration things you can do. And what I'm doing is I'm telling it to watch these directories. So I want it to watch for changes in the shared folder and also in the API folder. If anything changes in those locations, I want it to restart my server. Okay, so let's focus in on our app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Bootstrap to build this, and I'm actually gonna steal some code here from, the, from a Bootstrap example. So this example here, um, I, I'm gonna use some pieces of it. I have like a basic shell that I've put together here that I wanna use. So I'm gonna start off and I want to be able to uh, I want to be able to run my front end separate from my back end. I need two web servers here. So you'll notice that I have an API, a set of API scripts, and I also have a set of app scripts. So for the app, I'm using Parcel, and just like I did with the API, I have one version for production and one version for development. So if I were to say uh, npm run app, what it's going to do is it's going to bundle my index.html page inside of app. You'll see that's happening over here, and it'll produce this disk directory. So it creates a built version of my, of my project that's all bundled and ready to go, and it also created this .cache directory, which has a whole bunch of build artifacts. This thing could be deleted if you want or just ignored. The other thing I have is I have this dev app dev. So if I say npm run app dev, it's gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna start a hot reload server so that when I go to localhost 1234, I get this. And if I make a change in here, so for example, if I say drop some files here, exclamation, exclamation, and I save this, I'll show you here when I save this, You'll see, I don't know if you saw that, but very quickly it will rebuild this. And over here, this is updated. So I have those changes live. So it's gonna keep everything so that it's going, um, going along. As I'm making changes, all those changes are gonna be reflected. Now I've got one more trick for you, and that is I'm gonna use a node module called npm run all. And what it lets me do is it lets me run multiple NPM scripts at the same time. 
So think about this. I have a way of running my server in a live development mode. And I also have a way of running my front end in a live development mode. What I really want is I want to be able to run both of these in parallel. So what npm run all gives you is it gives you two functions you can call run s and run p. So I can run in sequence or I can run in parallel. So if I, if I said run in sequence, it would mean run this script until it's finished and then run this script afterward. If I say run in parallel, it's gonna run both of these at the same time. So I'm gonna get both of my servers running at the same time. So check this out. If I say npm run dev, it's gonna first start up my server and then it's gonna build my front end. So now I have a server that's listening on port 8080 and I have a second server that's listening on port 1234. So we go here, that's great. And now I have an environment that I can just leave running in the background and it will keep building things and giving me uh, the code as we go. Okay, so let's build out this index.html page. So the first problem I have is I need this to look like this. And so this thing here is using, let's just take a look at the source, view page source. They've got a style sheet. You can see that they're loading a style sheet. So if I wanted to, I could copy this style sheet, throw this in the head, save that, and if I, it's still building, let's let it build. Uh, can't find, whoops. Oh, because it's loading it. Look at, look at the URL that they're using. So this URL isn't gonna work for me. So it can't find a file called bootstrap min CSS in this location. However, in my package.json, what I did was I installed bootstrap here which means that Bootstrap is installed inside node modules. I'll show you where it is. So inside node modules, I have Bootstrap. Inside Bootstrap, I have dist, CSS, and then I have all the same files. Here's Bootstrap min.css. I'm gonna copy a relative path to this file. And then up here in my index file, I can replace this here with the following. So node modules, now notice that node modules is one level higher than my index.html file. So I need to go up one level, up one level to node modules, bootstrap, etc., all the way across here. Because I'm not loading from a CDN, I'm gonna get rid of these and I'll save that. Now it's building the bootstrap min file right here. You can see it going through and building this. We go back to this, if I refresh this now, it works. So I have my CSS file has uh, has been loaded. This thing has, um, well, actually th this this is fine. This I think they have extra CSS uh, in here. To, so let's just take a look. If I look at the page source again, here they have another, uh, yeah, they have another style sheet that they're loading right here. So this is this is another style sheet. So we might decide to add, add this later, but for now, let's just keep going with this. Okay, so what else do we need to do? Well, I need to write a bunch of code. So let's, I have an index.js file where I wanna put my code, but let's load that code in. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my page and I'm gonna add a script, source equals index.js, and I'll save that, and it automatically builds it, and let's just make sure that it's working. If I go over here and say console.log hello, and I save that, you can see that over here in my browser, I have hello. So it is automatically connected, everything's loading, that's, that's working the way that I would expect. All right, so let's begin by pulling in a bunch of things that we need. So the first thing that I need is uh, I need jQuery. So I am gonna use jQuery, Bootstrap, uh, Lodash. I don't think I installed Lodash in here, so I'll have to install Lodash. So let's start pulling these things in. So in here, I'm gonna say import dollar from jQuery. And just to make, just to prove to myself that it's working, I'll log that object. So if I run this, you'll see that here jQuery has been printed out. So that's working. 
I want to import um, Lodash. So let's print out Lodash as well. And let's see what's going on. Let me get rid of this to make it easier to see. So here it is, a Lodash is a function. So that's actually, so Lodash is working. So what it's done for me is it's automatically pulled in Lodash. It hasn't added it to the list of dependencies. So one of the things I should do is I should go back and add it. So if I wanted to here, I could say npm install save Lodash like that so that it gets registered in the list of dependencies that I'm, you know, that I that I know that I need. Okay, so npm run dev. Console and I'm back. Okay, so I've got jQuery, I've got Lodash, let's pull in Bootstrap. Bootstrap doesn't export anything, it just needs to be imported. So I'm gonna pull that in. And you'll notice that my HTML just has this one JavaScript file and one style sheet. That's it. So I'm I'm doing it all in all of my other JS is being pulled in and bundled for me automatically. So parcel is putting those together and at runtime, those will all be available. Okay, I also wanna pull in, I wanna import my um, character count function and it's in shared character count like that. And Again, console log character count. There it is. So here's our here's this function. It's it's brought it in, which is great. So you'll see that now I'm using this uh, character count function. I'm using it in Node inside of my API. So here it is being imp, you know being required and then used here. And then you'll also notice that I'm using it using an import style inside of my front end code. So that that's really flexible. I can use it in both both contexts. Okay, so let's do one more thing. I want to use another cool little library here called drag and drop. So if you pull this library in, you npm install drag and drop, and then you require it or you import it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import drag drop from drag drop like that. And then what you can do is you can call this function and you can say when anybody drops anything on this target, call this function here and pass whatever file that they they put over here. And if you want, you can automatically have that data be handed to you as a buffer, which I'm gonna use so that I can just get the raw string of it. So I'm gonna use the slash uh, buffer version, like so. Okay, so let's, let's put all of this to use. So I'm gonna write a function and I'm gonna say, uh, drag drop, whenever anybody drops anything on the body, I want to call a function where I'm passed in the files that they dropped. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just uh, do a console log and I'll say drop and then I'll um, print out the files like so. So I'll save this, I'll go back here and I actually have the text of the Great Gatsby right here. I downloaded it, so I have it sitting here ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop this onto the page like this, and I let go, whoops, so that didn't work. So what did I do wrong? So that opened it up. Oh, I think I know why. Probably the body is not high enough, yeah. So the body is not, is not high enough, so let's fix that. So as a quick hack, what I'm gonna do is I'll say style, 
uh, HTML and body are both height 100%. And now, yeah, so now, the, now they're taking up the full page. Let's try that again. So if I were to drag this on here and I let go, you'll see that I get a drop happening and I have an array with this uh, buffer, uint8 array. So it's like binary data that's in there. So let's let's start off and what I think I'll do is I will uh, convert that to, I'm gonna convert this. Um, well, first of all, if I get files, so I'm, get, I'm only gonna support, only support one file for now. So if the number of files is uh, greater than one, or if it's not equal to one, uh, then I'm gonna say console.log, sorry, only one file at a time, and then I will return. But otherwise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say file is equal to files at zero. So now I've got, I've got that file like this, or you'll sometimes see people do object destructing on arrays or array destructing like this, where they'll say, get me the first element out of this array and uh, I wanna call it file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that file and I'm gonna turn it into text. So I'll say file dot uh, to string and I wanna convert this into a UTF-8 string. And then let's just console log it. Uh, console log the text. So I drag this in, I let go, and you can see that I have all of the text of that novel in my console here. So that worked out really well. Okay, so what I want to do is, after the user drops this in, I want to, um, let's call a function to process the text, like so. Okay, so we need a function, process text function. Um, Function process text takes text. Okay, let's think about what we need to do here. So I need to take the text that the user just dropped into the browser. And ideally what I'd like to do is I'd like to send it to my API. So my API is expecting a post. So let's try and do a post. Um, so let's write a function to post that to the API, send it to my API. So what we would do is we would need to do a fetch. And we're gonna go, we're gonna do a fetch to HTTP uh, localhost 8080 API slash character count. So that's our URL. Now, if you just do a fetch like this, it's gonna do a get request. So what I need to do is I need to do a post. So I'm gonna add um, a method and I'm gonna say, I wanna do a post like that. Okay, so when we fetch, fetch is going to return a promise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, dot then, when the response comes back, uh, I'm going to convert it into JSON, like so. Convert it into JSON. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to just throw in an error handler. So I'm gonna say if there's an error, then I'm gonna console dot, uh, well, let's do two things. Let's say console dot warn, unable to uh, send file to um, API. And I'll print out the error there, and then I'll just return null like that. Okay, so I have my fetch, and uh, I think what I'm what I need to do is I need to let's think about this for a second. So it's, I'm going to move this to another function to keep this a little bit simpler. So let's do let's say function. Um, I'll just call it API for now, text. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return 
the promise like so. So I'm gonna return that promise back again. So now down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the API, I'm gonna pass in text, and when I get back the response, the response is going to be this object, the, the data, the stats uh, that I'm being given. Uh, I'm going to, let's just start off by console logging it. Console.log those stats like that. All right, let's see if that works. So I'm gonna drag this in, let go, and I get a, a 500 error, internal server error. And you can see that there is a problem over here. Um, Text.split is not a function. So we gotta figure out unexpected uh, token in JSON. So API character count 500. So let's see, so it's crashing here, it's unhappy on Line 11 of my, okay, so I'm taking request.body, passing it into my character count, and then returning that back again. When I go in there, it dies on line 39 right here. So let's figure out what has gone wrong. So I'm going to console.log text like that. I'm going to save this and you see my node server restarts. So I'm going to try this again. So I put that up here and you'll see that I'm getting text looks like it is an object and not um, text looks like it's an object. So let's figure out why that is. So I have my body parser set up to process the body as text up to five megs. I'm getting the request.body here, character account request.body. And so it, where is my problem? Oh, I know what the problem is. Okay, so over here, I'm not sending anything. I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not actually posting any data. So what I need to do is I need to um, let me just pull this down. I need to add a body Yes, I need to add the text. I need to send the text along like this. So now if I were to go and drag this here, you see the body gets printed out. So it is receiving the body. So that makes sense. Okay, so let's um, let's get rid of this console log that I don't need and restart everything. And let's go back to the browser and try this again. So I'm gonna drag this in, let go. And you can see that now I'm getting back all of my lines of data. So the first line of data, like you can see all of the lines, plus it has the count. So it has the count and the line. So this is, this is perfect. This is working exactly the way that I want. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle that I have here is, um, well, I guess two pieces of the puzzle. So what if the what if the what if the network has dropped? What if the network has dropped? So for example, if we try and do a fetch, so let's 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 think about this. Um, what if we say um, what if the browser is not currently online? So if window dot navigator dot online is true. So if we're online then let's do this. Let's return a promise where we do a fetch. So in this case, I'm gonna console log and I'm gonna say um, using, uh, using server API over network. However, if we can't use the server, so if we're online, do this. If we're offline, use the browser to do it. So this is kind of a made up example because if I could do it in the browser, why don't I just do it in the browser anyway? But I wanted to show you how code, the same code could be used in both places. So let's just do that here. So I'm gonna say, if we're offline, then I'm gonna console.log uh, using browser instead of network. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return character count 
text, except that this won't work exactly because my API function needs to return a promise. So when I'm using fetch, I'm going to return the promise that is created by fetch. So down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this in promise.resolve so that it will return a promise so that in both case, I'm gonna get back the stats. So let's, let's watch this happen. So if I drag this in, it uses the server API to do it. But if I turn my network off, if I go offline and I go back to the console and I drag this in here, you'll see that it used the browser instead of the network. So it went, so it works both ways. And if the network is there, if I go back online and I drag this in, then it's using the API over the network. So what I have here is I have an API that can work when I'm online or when I'm offline. It'll work both ways because I'm exposing this function as an API. So I can use it as an API here, but I can also use it just as it is inside the browser. So that's what I'm doing over here when I, when I import that function into my code. So kind of an interesting approach where you can think about where you put certain parts of your application. Some of it could live on the server, some of it could live in the browser, and some of it could be kind of in both places. So things like validation code or things that, things that you can do in the browser, you might ship them to the browser, things that you can't do in the browser and you need to send to the server, you will. Okay, we've got one more piece of the puzzle here. I wanna do a table. So in Bootstrap, a table looks like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, essentially what I wanna do is I want to have a way to make a table. So I'm gonna write another function. Um, called build table and it's gonna take stats and what it's gonna do, so let's define const uh, table start is equal to this and const table end is equal to, like it would just be slash uh, t body slash table like so. And then I'm gonna do something similar to what we did in, um, a pre in the example code this week. I'm gonna use Lodash to create a template function. So I'm gonna pass in all of the lines. So just to remind you what I'm talking about here, whenever I drag this in, I'm getting back an object that has these lines arrays so the lines array has all of these objects with a count and then a line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, uh, the first column is going to be the count. Second column is gonna be the line. And I'll get rid of these other columns. And then down here, I wanna do something similar. So I want to pass in the lines and then process each line and I wanna have the count of the line, and I also wanna have the text of the line, and I wanna put that into the rows. So here what I'll do is I will return the table header, or the table start, plus the rows, plus the table end, like so. So build table will use uh, Lodash and templating in the, in the browser side to be able to generate the HTML that we need to create this table. Okay, so now what I can do is I can replace this console.log with something a little bit, uh, well, I can replace it with something that's gonna affect the page. So what I'd like to do is replace what's in the page. So I'm gonna use jQuery to grab the main element. And I'm gonna set the HTML of the main element to be my build table. And I'm gonna call it with stats like that. Save this, let's give this a try. So I drop this in here and I get a table. So it's replaced it and now I have each of the lines and how many characters are in that line like this. And you can see that it happened over the network. If I refresh this, if I turn off the network and I drag this in here and I let go, it happens, it happens offline, right? 
It happens offline like this. So we've been able to use a bunch of the things from this week. So we've got jQuery, Bootstrap, Lodash. We've pulled in some other libraries like this drag and drop library. We're using our own library code, our own module that we wrote on the server side. And we have a fallback API that works in the browser or works on the server side if the server is up and running and we're online. So we're posting that content back here. And if it's not, then we're gonna run it inside of the, um, we'll run it inside the browser. Actually, we could do one improvement, one more improvement here. So we have, if, if our fetch fails for some reason, right now what we're doing is we're just returning null. But what we could actually do is we could return character count text. In other words, if the server fails, so let's make our server fail, for example. I'm gonna turn my network back on. Let's say that my server, let's, let's force it to fail. So let's just return, um, let's do res.status 500. Let's do that. So now when we drop this file in here, we get an error here. Let's figure out why we didn't. Uh, we go to our sources and we go to our app. And I want to see what happens when this fails. So presumably we should be here. Let's run this again. So I'm gonna drop this in here and console over the rest.json. Hmm. I have to debug this longer, so I'm not gonna waste your time to do this right now uh, to figure out why it's not dropping me in here. Probably I need to, let me try one thing before I go further. Uh, I think I have to say, uh, if not res.okay, then throw new error unable to um, use API. So if I do this, if I drop this in here, nope, still not right. Hmm. Uh, anyway, it's something that I'll look into and before I post it up online and I'll figure out what the problem is. But the without wasting more time on that, the I think the, the, the main goal that I have with this example is just to show you that we can combine things in really interesting ways. We can take bits of code that were written in really old styles or in Node or were meant only for the browser, and we can start to mix all of those things together. We can use Node and NPM scripts to be able to create really dynamic development environments that let us work across server APIs and in the browser to be able to do these things together. We're gonna to use a lot of the techniques that I'm showing you here when we're working with all of these different frameworks and front end tools. So slowly, 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 I wanna get you comfortable with the idea of mixing and matching different technologies from the server side and the browser. When you do front, front end code, you tend to do this Frankenstein style hybrid approach where a lot of things are from the from the, the server side, a lot of things are from the browser side, but then you have these things that you can sort of mix and they meet in the middle and you do uh, best of both worlds. So you find that you're often jumping back and forth and people talk about being a so-called uh, full stack developer where they're doing front end and back end and it's kind of all the same thing. Well, this is an example of what we mean when we're talking about that. Anyway, I'll post this and you can play with it a little bit more. And if you have questions about it, let me know.